Hi, today I'm going to talk about one very specific calibration technique that's available if you're trying to calibrate the material model to tension data of specific specimens with the dog bone shaped specimens, particularly the ASTM standardized specimens for testing of plastics. In that case, and if you want to calibrate an abacus material model, then I will show you today how you can use the tension test load case that's available in M calibration to very quickly perform this type of calibration in an accurate and useful way. The first step is to load the experimental force displacement data that you have into M calibration. So here's my clean window M calibration. I'm not going to read in the experimental data. It's very simple. I'm just going to go to clicking on the plus sign here. And then I'm going to switch over the load case type to tension test. And this is the point of this whole demonstration. How does this load case type work? Well, you have to specify what type of specimen you did use in your testing. In this case, I'm going to use the ASTM D638 type 4 specimen. And there are a few other ones you can choose from here. Then I'm going to read in my experimental data file. It's just a file that has three columns, time, displacement, and force, as you can see here, in that particular order. Then it's very important that you specify also the values that are requested here. How thick was your specimen? How far did you grip the, the specimen from the center? And um, how many CPUs do you want to use when you simulate this eventually? So it's going to pick these. I'm going to um, switch this over to use Abacus as the solver while I'm here. So uh, we're ready for that later. Uh, and here's the data. This is force displacement, and this is what we will use for our calibration in the end. We will find a material model that when simulating the actual test specimen, the just like it was done in the experiment, matches this data. But you don't start there. That's, not the, that's the final refinement. What we will start with for the calibration is converting this force displacement data into approximate stress strain data. So to show that, I'm just going to select this load case here. I'm going to uh, right click on it and go to edit experimental data. That takes the data from that file and puts it into the data tab of M calibration. Now I need to convert this displacement and force data into approximate stress and strain. And uh, we can do that by looking at this particular shape uh, of the specimen that we're interested in. And there's some hints here in the ASTM standard. So here's a, a, an image in the ASTM D638 standard. We're particularly interested in, in this example in the type 4 specimens. And the, the quantities that are specified in the standard are the width of the gauge section and L, the, basically the length of the section here. So these are 6 millimeters and 33 millimeters as specified here. That is what's known because this is the specimen geometry that we are using according to the standard. And we can now convert our data here into the stress strain data. So displacement, I select the whole column, I go to add and multiply, and I need to divide the displacement by the length of the section, which was 33 millimeters in this case, approximately. So this is not exactly the engineering strain because it may be inhomogeneous, but it's approximately right. So we'll pick this one. The force, we can 100% accurately convert to engineering stress by simply dividing it by the initial cross-sectional area, which is um, 18 in this case. And um, it's 18 because the, the thickness was three and the width was six. So I'm gonna rename these columns to be engineering strain and engineering stress. And uh, you can plot them here to see what they look like. Here they are. I can then read these into uh, the main window by creating a new load case here. Clicking on this, and I'm going to rename this to approximate tension, and I'm going to click OK. Uh, it's still showing force displacement from the first load case. I can switch over to plotting engineering stress strain by clicking on that icon. And then we can calibrate our material models to this data initially. So I'm going to turn off the the more advanced uh, force displacement data, we're going to do pre-calibration to this data, which will speed us up this whole procedure up a lot. So I'm going to calibrate two different material models in my demonstration here today. I'm going to start with a very basic and simple elastic plastic isotropic hardening material model that's in Abacus. 
I'm just going to click it here. I'm going to just use the default settings that are available. And then here are the parameters. For this particular material model, M calibration picks the parameters pretty well. It looks at the experimental data and it selects these parameters to match the data very well. As you can see, the dashed line is pretty much on top of the solid line. And this is because of uh, how this material model is uh, developed. It's a piecewise linear model. It's very easy to calibrate. You don't actually have to search for the parameters. M calibration just picks them for you. So here's one of the material models I want to in investigate. Um, the second material model I want to investigate is a, a different viscoplastic material model. It's a polyumod TNV model. I'm going to use the thermoplastic defined option here. I'm going to say OK. And uh, if I run this once, we'll see that the predictions, the, the initial guess of these parameters are not that great. We would need to actually search for them a little bit. And that's something that's easy to do here. I just run calibrate. And when we click on that, we'll see that M calibration is smart enough to give us a warning. We're doing something uh, for demonstration purposes here that you shouldn't do. We're trying to calibrate a visco elastic viscoplastic material to a test that only has one strain rate. Really, we should have more data, but we can, we can work with that here. So I was going to say OK. And then we can search for these parameters as usual. I've already done the calibration, so let me switch over to my saved results. So here are my saved results. After running this calibration, I get an error of about 1.38%. It's still pretty good, similar in, in accuracy to what we got with the elastic plastic isotropic hardening plasticity model. But this is just approximate because we didn't really know the, the actual engineering stress strain response. These are just approximations due to the inhomogeneous stress and strain distribution in the specimen. We need to do the second step. We're going to calibrate this material using the tension test load case. So I'm going to do it. start here with the elastic plastic material. So let me open my file. And here it is. So if you run this ca uh, calculation, you will see a, a very interesting result. So I'm going to run it, and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. Now we're actually going to simulate using a finite element model this particular geometry, and we will find out what our pre-calibrated model that matched the stress strain data really well, how it behaves in this case. So let's take a look. And the calculation just finished. We'll see that the predicted force response in dash line here looks absolutely surprising, really weird. Look at that. It goes up just fine, and then it drops really quickly. What's going on? We were able to calibrate, or capture the approximate stress strain data with this very specific material model. But when we simulate the tension specimen, we get really crappy results. Why is that? Um, let's take a look to figure that out. Let's take a look uh, using Abacus CAE what the mesh looks like in this deformed state. So I'm going to click on this button here uh, after I select my load case. And uh, that will open CAE for us. And we can take a look at what the, uh, the, what the problem is. So here's Abacus CAE. We see the disformed mesh. We see the symmetry that was used in the simulation. All of this was set up by M calibration. We didn't want uh, need to worry about it. But if we look at the deformed mesh in the end of this calculation, we'll see something interesting, I think. Here it is. We'll see that it's a ridiculous localization of the deformation. The neck image comes absolutely insane here. It's something going on that's not so good, obviously, here. Uh, one could argue that the material model was not very good because we see a result that doesn't make that much sense. Uh, but that's the point here with this particular problem. An elastic plastic isotropic hardening prediction does not work very well in this case uh, unless we recalibrate it. And that's tricky to do because the initial guess wasn't very good. I, instead, I would propose we try the viscoplastic material model. So let me open that file. So here's my elastic plastic uh, file. Um, and um, here's my uh, load case. I can simply just run this one now. If I run it one time, um, we will get interesting results. I already did that, so I'm going to show you some, some uh, results here. Um, this uh, figure shows what the predicted force displacement results will look like with the TNV model from the polyumod library when we calibrate it to the approximate stress strain data. It looks still pretty good in force displacement predictions here. This is the initial guess, error 2.59% approximately. 
If I then start to optimize the parameters here, after about 20 functional evaluations, we get the error down to about 2.14. And if about 300 function evaluation, we have an error of 1.5. It matches the data very well. So this calibration converges just like one would expect. Let's take a look at uh, how this looks in Abacus CIE. So here's the initial configuration in Abacus CIE. You can look at the deformed state and see that it looks just like one would expect. It's a nice continuous deformation field, just like we would see in the real experiment. So let's summarize. Um, if you're interested in analyzing force displacement data from a tension test, you're using one of these standardized specimen geometries, which is what I would recommend you do if you do tension tests. And if you're focusing on Abacus as your FE solver, then you should consider using this approach I'm talking about here. Um, you can uh, use this to calibrate uh, a material model to the force displacement results. Um, you can try to use DMA results too, but if a material is undergoing necking, that is not so good as I showed in one of my previous videos. If you don't have necking, that would be perfectly fine and would run faster than what I showed here. But if you have some necking, the approach that I talked about here would be the preferred method to analyze the data. It works well, you get the material model that's accurate. It does take longer to do because you have to iterate a finite element simulation that you run with Abacus to solve the problem, but it's a refinement. You can do the, the majority of the calibration using approximate stress thing data, just like I showed here. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.